Riverside Healthcare puts the health and wellness information you need well within reach. And welcome to the Well Within Reach podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Diaz. And today we're going to be talking about grocery shopping for heart health with one of Riverside Healthcare's advanced practice nurses, Sherry Rogers. Before we dive into the topic, Sherry, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alyssa. It's nice to be here. And let's learn a little bit about your long history with Riverside and in the healthcare field. Well, I have been a nurse for about 33 years and uh, have been fortunate to uh, work within the community. And I've been at Riverside for quite a long time um, from uh, starting as a new grad nurse, uh, growing into an ICU nurse, uh, nursing management, and my passion and my calling brought me to nurse practitioner. Uh, So it's been a really um, interesting. long journey, but a very fulfilling journey. And I like what I do now with working with patients and families. And Sherry, you specialize in our Heart and Vascular Institute in the Heart Failure Clinic, right? Yes, I am a certified heart failure nurse and I work in conjunction with another advanced practice nurse. So we care for the patients in the community, specifically with heart failure, both on the inpatient level when hospitalized and then uh, out in the community on an outpatient basis. Yes. And so heart health is such an important topic and we're so thankful that you joined us on the podcast today to talk about heart healthy grocery shopping. And it's something that, you know, we hear so many times from our doctors, whether you have, you know, a normal health status or a special condition um, that you need to eat better. But what does that mean and how do we make that happen? So that's what our podcast is about today. So um, many struggle with putting that recommendation into action but we know that a heart healthy diet starts with having the right foods at home. So that's kind of what we're here to talk about today. Um, understanding your diagnosis and what guidelines your doctor provides is always a good thing. So where do we start? That's such a good question. Um, and as I had uh, come into the provider world and, and being an advanced practice nurse, when, when I would see patients, um, you know, uh, providers are very good about giving direction of saying, you need to eat this or you need to eat less of this or you need to try this. Um, but oftentimes it kind of would fall a little bit short. Patients understand that. But how do I put that into action? What is it? You know, I need to eat less salt. I need to eat more fruit. Well, what is less and what is more uh, is is different for every every person. So, as I came um, into this, I I thought that it's helpful to help patients to to be uh, more specific and and measurable and understand a little bit more about um, prevention and uh, wellness and maintenance. Uh, literally, because food fuels our bodies, it fuels our cells. So uh, to understand that association that sometimes food is the greatest medicine you can have with prevention and managing um, a condition that's difficult is really key in understanding. So we like to um, uh, work with, in particular, what does it mean for that patient, the individualized care. And that's what I try to do when I see patients is uh, look at and assess what their usual, what their normal is, and look at ways to interact and impact. Sometimes I frequently say the smallest change for the greatest benefit. And where does that start? But when you get home and in the cupboards in your house, uh, we all have to go to the grocery store. We all have to buy food. So educating ourselves on what is oftentimes I talk about best and even better to be able to balance out so those medicines that we are prescribing can actually work more effectively. And hopefully sometimes we can get people off medications, you know, as well as maximize the benefit for the least amount of need. And that's such a great point that you made that you need to partner with patients to really help them understand and um, help them along their journey of finding better health through nutrition. And so something really exciting uh, that you have partnered with a local grocer on is developing a heart-healthy grocery guide. And so tell us a little bit more about that process. Absolutely. Um, In my uh, training and my development, we're often... um, Um, able to go to uh, seminars and things like that and to listen to other experts and look at things uh, in in other places across the country that have been successful into reaching patients and and really making a difference in their lives. And um, 
probably about a year, year and a half ago, I uh, went to a conference in, um, I think it was in Texas, and listened to other advanced practice nurses and nurse practitioners who specialize in heart failure um, talk about how they did things to impact their patients and help them become more equipped, if you will, to manage the disease process. And um, we all are familiar with um, the terms heart healthy diet. We're familiar with being told to eat low sodium. Uh, more vegetables, more fruits, but again, those are kind of a bit obsolete as far as, well, how do I do that? And this one nurse practitioner gave um, a talk and said that she partnered in the community with the local grocers and actually um, was able to create something for patients that helped better direct them when they're going to the grocery store. So yes, I, I did partner uh, with our local grocers and I feel like, even for me personally, when I go to the grocery store to get five things, oftentimes I come with 10 or 15 because I haven't maybe planned well or this looks good, that looks good. And so um, I was really pleased with being able to make a, um, a list for patients of exactly what aisles to find the right foods in and then also not only aisle locations, but look for this type of uh, food label with this amount of sodium, avoid this amount of sodium, you know, foods. And it's really a, a directive guide that helps people plan before they get to the grocery store. So I was very, very excited and it's been extremely well received. And that was a light bulb moment of probably a missing piece for patients when we give advice, medical advice and, and nutrition advice, you know, to give more tools to help patients make good decisions. Right. And it's all about empowering the patients so that they feel like they have a say in their health and that they understand what it means for them to be healthy. Um, let's talk just at a glance about some of the things to keep in mind just for general heart health. Again, we know that each patient's case is a little bit different, but we'll run through the categories in the grocery store and I'll have you just give us a few tips on each one for people to keep in mind. For the complete grocery guide, just visit us online at riversidehealthcare.org and you'll find the very detailed guide that Sherry has uh, provided for us. But Sherry, let's start with the produce department. What types of things should people be looking for? So I love the produce department. Um, we've heard the terms, you know, eat from the rainbow. And that is so, so very true. When you're in the produce, that's usually the first thing when you come in at any grocery store because the fresh is first. So um, you want to balance out I say kind of balance out colors, you know, uh, some people like more green things. There are certain medications that you can't have as many green things, but guess what? There are yellow things. There are red things. There are white things, you know, fresh is best um, in the produce department. Uh, I also like to talk about, you know, eating to uh, maximizing so you can have volume, but not volume with nutrition, but not a lot of calories. And that's exactly what's in the produce department. Um, you know, even the fruits, there's different colors of fruits. Sometimes people just like an apple or something, but I really challenge my patients to try new things. So when you're in the produce department, think about the rainbow and think about trying something once, um, you know, kind of look at, oh, I've never had that before. I wonder, cause it's, it's funny. And even within my own family, you know, there's certain likes and like, oh, I will never eat this. And uh, I encourage people to jump outside of their comfort zone because you'd probably be surprised what you thought as a child that you absolutely hated. I guarantee if you give it another shot, you probably could find a way to make it that would be healthy and that you're getting the the vitamins and the minerals. Yeah, absolutely. And especially in the produce department, there are so many ways to prepare each individual ingredient that, you know, the opportunities are very, very vast. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And let's transition over to the dairy department. What should people be looking for? So when we're talking dairy, obviously dairy, we need to think calcium and we do need calcium, especially uh, women and uh, elderly people aging. Oftentimes people like to pick one food group in the dairy and maximize it. Um, and you can get into trouble with overdoing in that realm. Um, you know, people like, I don't drink milk, so I eat a lot of cheese. 
Well, uh, cheese, while absolutely contains calcium, there are other effects in the cheese with um, fat and different things like that that can offset uh, an intended good choice. Um, I, you know, we all want to look for l lower fat, but I'm more proponent of watch the sugar that's in the dairy. And uh, I was thinking about this this morning. Uh, my example is, and yogurt is very good for you. And we all hear things about Greek yogurt. And yes, it has more protein. And if you need more protein, that's one way to get it. One thing um, that's a tip that I say, instead of buying those uh, lovely fruit filled, quote unquote, all natural flavored yogurts in that, I'm a proponent of buy the plain or the vanilla and add your own fresh fruit. Add your own nuts, add your own little bit of honey or something like that, rather than buying something that's been processed and packaged and had to transport across, you know. So, yes, keep that food group in. Um, don't overdo in the cheese, you know, and obviously we all need to treat once in a while and ice cream is ice cream. So <laughs> as long as you don't eat ice cream every day, all day, you know, you have to treat yourself once in a while. Milk is good. Um, cottage cheese, that's one thing. Um, in the heart world, um, a lot of my patients think, oh, I don't get a lot of protein, so I eat a lot of cottage cheese. We have to read labels. We have to start looking at what's in that label, how much fat, how much sodium. What's the sodium content? Because we could offset a medication by eating too much, you know, we might need more of something because we're having too much salt in our diet and that salt might be from the cottage cheese or the cheese that we're eating. So, um, yeah, you know, there's a purpose for two servings of dairy a day and that's, you know, a good thing. All good tips to keep in mind when shopping in the dairy section. Um, and your meat, poultry, fish, what are your general guidelines on those? We like to promote, obviously, the leaner cuts of meat, uh, fresh meat, um, and grill, baked, broiled. Uh, air fryers are new now. That's good. Uh, we say a little less red meat, uh, more fish, more chicken, those types of things. I think one of the recommendations now are, you know, maybe one to two servings of red meat a week, m you know, maximum. Um, and it's okay to include all all types, but again, it's kind of how you prepare them. So grilled, baked, broiled, and fresh. I hesitate, other than buying a frozen turkey or that, you know, the, the meats that, that are not as healthy, obviously, are the hams, the processed things that come through that are infused with different preservatives, if you will. Um, we don't recommend a lot buying um, frozen prepared meats that might have sauces or gravies from the standpoint of if you think about what, how can you take them from freezer to table and it looks like you just spent your hour and a half cooking them preservatives. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of different preservatives and things that come out of the freezer, which is the convenience food right now. So read your labels, read well. Yes. Even though it's convenient, it might not be the best choice for your health. Correct. And it's not that hard to prepare the meals. It's tempting to just get something ready made, but really preparing your own food gives you a sense of pride for preparing it on your own anyway. Plus it has great health benefits. Yes. Um, let's talk in broad about some of your pantry essentials and condiments um, that you might find in the grocery store aisles. So what we, as far as heart health and that say in the the condiments in that. Um, a lot of the condiments, the ketchup and that has a lot of sugar, a lot of salt. Look for the things that say low sodium first and foremost. Uh, from the pantry, as far as uh, what comes out of a bottle, we say um, uh, try for like onion powder, garlic powder. Look you have to look beyond something that says no salt because sometimes it's got potassium chloride and not sodium chloride. So we truly promote fresh herbs, or this is a case of frozen herbs, dried herbs, garlic, onion, cilantro, parsley, all, dill, all of those things. And it's kind of fun now. We're getting into May, April, May, where all the these uh, fresh things are coming up and at your local farmer's market. Um, my caution probably on, on condiments and pantry essentials is just read the label and know what's in there. And if you can do it fresh uh, or dried, that is the preferred uh, type of, of uh, spice in that to add. Yes. And just a word or tip on Canned foods. So canned foods, um, uh, canned foods, the biggest 
oh, hang up with canned foods is if we think about this and how can they be on the grocery store shelf for so, so long preservatives because you know, my grandmother canned both my, you know, we we're a canning society and we can do it fresh when it becomes industry wide, then, you know, there are things that they need to do to, pr- to keep that food fresh per se, and uh, able to be stocked and, and utilized. Uh, if you're on a sodium restricted diet, please, please read those labels and look for the lower sodium foods. In my world, in heart failure, we uh, promote fresh and frozen fresh and frozen over canned from the sodium load. You'll be surprised if you go to the grocery store and really take a little bit extra time and look at labels like, wow, I didn't realize that's, you know, what made that able to be in the can and available. All right. And then everybody's favorite. What about snacks? Yes. So uh, snacks is its own little portion of the world. And it really, again, comes down to label reading. You do not want things that have artificial flavorings, sweeteners, preservatives. Um, Check the salt. You know, in my world, we say no salt, peanuts, no salt, walnuts, no salt, almonds. Um, I challenge, again, reading your serving size to to everything that you're eating. We promote like air pop popcorn. That's good. Microwave popcorn is so convenient, but again, it just loads up with salt. Um, So, you know, obviously potato chips. There are some low sodium potato chips out there. I try to teach it's not as much about deprivation as it is of moderation and planning because um, you have to be able to understand what you're wanting to have, what's safe to have, and how to to balance that out in the scope of everything. Yeah, balance balance is key and so is the education on all of these topics. Again, uh, the grocery guide in its complete format can be found at riversidehealthcare.org and um, there's a map even. It tells you which aisles to go to um, for which uh, type of food you're searching for. So, and then it, it's a very detailed map on what to look for and what to avoid uh, when shopping in the grocery store. Sherry, do you have any other guidelines for heart healthy eating that you want to share in closing? Well, I think overall, you know, um, our bodies love nutrition and the more attention we can pay to what we put into them is going to have uh, health benefits for all. One of my uh, things that I like to share with my patients, it's really changing from living to eat, which we're all programmed to do, to really eating to live. And patients are surprised how much better they feel when I talk to them after getting out of the hospital and they feel rejuvenated and they have more energy and they're they're just amazed at what they, they hadn't known before and what they're putting into practice now. Yes, using food for fuel. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Sherry, for joining us. And this wraps up this edition of the Riverside Well Within Reach podcast.